As a maintenance professional, you know that tires are the number one maintenance cost for most fleets. When you maximize tire life through effective maintenance, you're contributing to safety, driver satisfaction, and your company's profitability. That's because properly cared for tires generally last longer, provide better handling and traction, and deliver superior fuel economy. One of the simplest ways to improve both tire performance and life is to make sure every tire is properly inflated all the time. Your supervisor can help you determine the right pressures for the tires in your fleet. And a few simple steps will help you maintain all your tires at the right pressure. First, make sure the tires are cold. Because heat causes tire pressure to increase, never try to check pressure when the tires are hot and never bleed air from a hot tire. Coming off the road, tires need at least three to four hours of cool down for accurate readings. If the vehicle has been parked overnight, make sure you check pressures before it is driven more than a mile. Always use an accurate tire gauge. Mallets or tire bellies are not tire gauges. Don't confuse them. They simply don't do the job. Check each tire and be sure to check both tires on dual assemblies. If the handholds aren't aligned for easy pressure checks, realign the wheels so they are. Make a note of the pressure in the tire, then adjust each one to the correct pressure. Even though outdoor temperatures affect tire pressures, always keep your tires at your fleet's recommended pressure. If a tire's pressure is just a little low, the tire may have a leak. On the other hand, even without a leak, a tire can lose about 2 PSI per month, another reason to check pressures frequently. But if most or all of the tires are low, someone may have deliberately misset the pressures, perhaps thinking that this would provide a more comfortable ride. Or they may have used a tire gauge that was out of calibration. Either way, you should report it to your supervisor and correct the inflation pressures. Any tire that is 20% or more below its correct air pressure is considered to be flat and must be replaced. Because running flat can cause serious internal damage, have a qualified technician examine it, inside and out, to determine if it's fit for service. As you check each tire, listen for leaks, especially around the valve. Plugged or loose valve cores, loose valve stems, and worn out valve stem grommets are a common cause of leaks. Make sure each valve stem is tightly sealed with a metal or flow-through type valve cap. Good caps prevent leakage and help keep contamination out of valve stems. Check sidewalls for wear and damage. If steel cord is exposed, the tire should be removed from service. It may help for your supervisor to call sidewall scuffing to the attention of the driver. A little more care during turns may reduce the problem. In some cases, switching to tires with sidewall protector ribs may also help. Check sidewall bulges thoroughly because they can indicate serious tire damage. If a bulge resulted from a repair, check it with a bulge gauge to make sure it won't cause trouble during a roadside inspection. Repairs should also be clearly marked with a blue triangle. Check wheels and rims for missing lug nuts, cracks, rust, corrosion, or other damage. Repair or replace as necessary. On any dual assembly, check both tires. They should match not only in pressure, but also in size. Tread patterns and tread depths should be similar. And for best wear characteristics, duals should match within one quarter of an inch in diameter. That's about 430 seconds in tread depth. If both tires on a dual assembly have flat spots, it may help minimize ride disturbance and irregular wear to clock the tires with flat spots approximately 180 degrees apart. Also check the tread depth on each tire on the vehicle. As you do this, avoid wear bars. These raised areas in the bottom of some tread grooves are put there to make it easier to determine when a tread is worn to the legal limit. But if your gauge is sitting on one of them, you'll get a false reading. Since wear may vary at different places on the tire, you should measure tread depth in at least two different locations around the circumference. And it's a good idea to measure in two adjacent grooves near the center of the tread. During scheduled PMs, record each measurement. 
If you've checked at two places in two grooves, add the four readings together and divide by four to get the average remaining tread depth for each tire. And always follow DOT and your own company standards for allowable remaining tread depth to determine when a tire should be removed. As you measure tread depths, note any unusual wear or damage. A certain number of tread cuts are normal, but beware of any cuts so deep you can see steel cord. If cord is exposed, the tire must be replaced. On drive tires, cross rotation may help to equalize heel and toe irregular wear patterns. And because rear drive tires tend to wear faster than fronts, cross rotation may also help equalize overall wear. There are a great number of different irregular wear conditions, some of which can be equalized or minimized through tire rotation. It's also a good idea to talk with drivers and look over any pre-trip and post-trip reports. Driver reports of handling difficulties or ride disturbances can often help you catch and fix problems early, before they become serious. For example, ask the driver if the vehicle is pulling to one side. That may indicate a problem with tractor alignment. Ask if the truck tends to wander from side to side, or is it dog tracking? These problems may actually be with trailer alignment. Is the truck vibrating? Is the vibration from side to side, or is it up and down? And where does the driver feel the vibration? In the steering wheel? In the seat? In the floor? Can it be felt in the sleeper? Any of these conditions can lead to rapid tire wear or irregular wear, which can shorten the life of tires. And ride disturbances may also be evidence of tire problems or equipment problems that can lead to tire problems. You'll find more information in industry publications like the Radial Tire Conditions Analysis Guide, available from the Maintenance Council of the American Trucking Associations. And you can ask your supervisor for copies of three Bridgestone videos, Saving Through Reducing Irregular Wear, Saving Through Scrap Tire Analysis, and Truck Tire Mounting for Customer Satisfaction. This last video comes with a set of wall charts that can be helpful in making sure tires are both match mounted and concentrically mounted. They're a helpful supplement to the OSHA and RMA mounting procedure charts that you should already have. Remember, for most fleets, tires are the single largest maintenance cost. So anything you can do to make tires last longer and deliver trouble-free performance saves your company money. At the same time, your efforts toward effective tire maintenance can help maximize tire-related fuel economy and minimize emergency road service costs. And remember, effective tire maintenance can make your fleet more productive and profitable and make you more valuable to your fleet.